Shahab Shabazi is 8,000 miles away from home. He came to the safe house here in Colombia after spending time in Venezuela, where he picked up Spanish. In the morning, Shahab will set off on a journey, following the footsteps of many thousands before him. Why are you going through the Darien Gap? Do you know how dangerous the Darien Gap is, yes. you know? But I got it the goal. Mm. I got it the goal. I need life. I need more life. This is just another routine journey for the smugglers guiding Shahab. For a few hundred dollars, they guide migrants who entrust them through this notoriously difficult no man's land. Migrants can arrive here with relative ease due to lax immigration policies in certain South American countries. They cross illegally from South to Central America through the Darien Gap and onwards toward the U.S. Other options, like taking a boat or plane, heightens the risk of capture and immediate deportation. For those who want to make it to America, they have to survive the jungle first. We have to stay close to the rivers. There are guide to the other side, at least one week's trek away, if nothing goes wrong. We're heading west toward mountainous terrain through thick tropical forest. El tapón es Darien es muy peligroso porque hay mucha loma, mucho río, hay muchas culebras, hay muchos tigres, porque yo vi morir a muchos, no solo uno, a muchos. Another danger here are violent paramilitary groups. They control the drug smuggling corridor that runs parallel to migrant routes deeper in the jungle. Over the years, we'd heard whispers about countless lives lost under the Darien's canopy. Migrants as old as 70 and as young as infants swallowed by the jungle. We're told these heavy, uncomfortable boots will protect our legs from venomous snakes and from the water. But it's impossible to keep our feet dry. We're only a few miles in, and our wet feet are blistering. Every step stings. Shahab, like so many other migrants who come through the Darien Gap, he has a pair of sneakers, one pair of clothing, all the possessions he has at this point in his little duffel bag. He's so ill prepared for this. What do you want to do when you get to the U.S., if you get to the U.S.? My professional job is a carpenter. I think I'm going to be a carpenter. If not, I'm going to be a chef. Well, I like to cook. 
a mí me gusta. Voy a ver que en USA. Do you have friends that you miss? My girlfriend. No, my girlfriend in, in Venezuela. Do you want to see her? Here, no. <laughs> no, here, no. Can you show us? Sí, puedo enseñar a ustedes, pero para grabar, no. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Bueno, ese es mi amor, ese es mi corazón. Pienso bien siempre de ella. Lo extraño mucho. Y pienso que dónde y cómo voy a buscar a ella, cómo puedo ver a ella. As we pack up camp, our guides warn about a steep ascent ahead of us. We're weighed down by our equipment, safety gear, and food. At this point, every ounce matters. This is a luxury that we cannot afford to carry with us. We're just going to have to rely on the river. Hmm? Hi, Adam. Andres. Andres? Uh, what country? India. India, wow. Japan. An encounter Japan. like this, a group yeah. of migrants stumbling Hi, across others, is becoming more frequent. This is a main passage that migrants traverse yeah, nice at the beginning you. of the trek. So you guys, uh, airplane? from India to Colombia? This group is a, a group of about eight from Sri Lanka and India, 6,000 miles away. And they've come here specifically because they want to get into the U.S. Cubanos, Haitianos, Nepalí, Dominicanos, de la India, sí, África también, sí. Tengo un cálculo que pasé más o menos como mil y dos mil personas. Yo para los pasé. Yo les di en la guisa ayuda. El año pasado aumentó el ciento por ciento. Toughest leg of the journey is about to begin. Thousand foot ascent in a very short span of time. With about 50 pounds of gear on my back. At some point, you can't help but feel like a complete asshole. Here we are carrying our high-tech gear. These guys have their entire lives on their backs. just summited to the top of the mountain that uh, essentially is the uh, demarcation line between Panama and Colombia. Mira, así una pierna en Colombia, otra en Panamá. Ajá, voy a orinar de cuerda. Orina en Colombia, mamá. What do you uh, want to do in Fresno? You have all your relatives. Do they know you're coming? No. The journey's not over yet, but uh, this is a moment of triumph and euphoria for many of these guys. <laughs> uh, four days is a walking, is a black, this side, this side, and this side. No proper walking, no shoulder. It's a pain. We're trying to learn more about the migrants' lives and what pushed them all the way out here. But almost like an element of survival, they all shut down, maybe too exhausted or too afraid to share their stories. They're on a mission, survive the jungle. Nothing else seems to matter. Pues directamente yo les he preguntado que por qué salen de su territorio. Entonces ellos, ellos me dicen porque su, su territorio donde ellos viven no pueden sobrevivir porque se están muriendo del hambre, porque no tienen la economía. Entonces yo digo una cosa, que si, que si yo estoy de esa manera para poderme sobrevivir yo, entonces yo, yo, yo me voy de esa parte. Sí. 
So one of the things that makes the Darien Gap so dangerous for migrants, aside from the untamed wilderness, it's the, it's the rain. This is one of the wettest places in the world, and it basically just stops everyone down in camp for a while. Absolutely stunning. As terrifying and fearsome as Mother Nature can be, it is absolutely astounding. It becomes difficult to distinguish between hours, and soon even the days merge together. It's an agonizing, repetitive cycle of eating, hiking, crossing rivers, and setting up camp, stopping only when we get too hot, too wet, or too hungry. Da vuelta y vuelta como el caracol, y a más y nunca llegan, porque así muchos han venido y no han llegado. I can't subir. I can't, can't go to up. For go to up, I need this one. No, no. See this one, I nope. can't. That's why it's hard. Pasando esa, esa vía demasiado difícil. Pero yo confía en Dios y con nombre de Dios me vine de este camino. I've seen you struggle every day and we still got a long ways to go. Is it worth it? Sí, yo creo, creo que vale la pena porque estoy salvando mi vida que consigo la cosa que estoy buscando. Mira, tiene tres o cuatro días, porque está, está buenecita. Mira, esta ropa, emigrante, que van cansados, la botan. Muy bonito, ¿eh? Another stopping point along the journey. The amount of garbage here is absolutely insane. Food, cans of tuna, cans of sardines, energy drinks, bottles of water, clothing. The hardest thing though is seeing children's clothing. As people get more and more fatigued, every ounce of clothing on their backs weighs them down and people just start stripping off their clothes here and you can see the desperation in the journey simply by looking at the trail that's left behind. Arroz, arroz. Poquito, poquito. No, dale. Yo he ayudado a muchas personas, mujeres, pues, en especial con niños. O sea, muchas personas piensan de que es malo. Pero si yo Yo para mí pienso que de una persona va, va a cargar, no puede, y me dice, yo te voy a pagar 10 dólares, 5, 20, y me llevas a tal parte, yo no tengo trabajo, para mí es bien. Por aquí hay muchos que han pasado y nunca han llegado. Se han caído. Se han caído y se han matado. Lo mismo es río. Río, como no conocen lo que es el río, Entonces hay veces que lo ven crecido y se le meten y pam, 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 hasta luego. Y por eso yo digo que siempre una persona por aquí necesita a alguien que lo guíe, que lo, pero que lo guíe bien guiado, porque solo le da duro. Cuando estoy solo, pienso mucho 
Casi tengo 10 días que no estoy hablando con mi madre. Y eso es muy difícil. Y ellos no saben que dónde estoy. Quiero que mi cara del primer día y hoy diferente mucho. You have lots of bites. Too much. Mucho, mucho. Too much. Does it hurt? No. Scratch, 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 scratch. No food, no medicine. Only agua, agua. No water, finish. You're still smiling. <laughs> How are you still smiling? No, my friend. Why are you still smiling? You look happy. You're happy. You're happy? God. God. You praying? Yeah. God. This is crazy. This is crazy. Did you know that? No. No food in my bag. But good. Okay? Alright. See, good all work. we pal. I go. Okay, my friend. said to me you know this isn't something you can understand you've got you've got a home you've got a country you've got money you've got belongings you have family these people have nothing this is a journey that they have to take despite all that mother nature is throwing at them i'm lucky enough not to be able to understand that Hay que seguirlo. Yo no puedo contar todas las cosas que me pasó, pero cuando yo estaba en Irán, yo tenía otra religión. Y eso pasa un problema con el gobierno. Finally, after a week together, Shahab opens up about his reasons for leaving Iran. He claims his problem started after he converted from Islam to Christianity, and that he was arrested in a church and tortured in prison. Todavía no puede volver. Y yo sé que cuando que vuelvo, puede ser que me ahorcan. I have a very, very problem, but my dream is bigger. We were just ready to leave camp, and we saw yet another migrant group. This is a big one, probably about 20 dudes or so. Let's go look. Do you speak English? No English. After today or for me? Okay. Right now? Today is plus four days. Four days. Yeah. Did you guys all come together? Everybody together? Uh, where, where do you want to go? USA? Where are you from? Eritrea. That's a long way. 
Do you are you, do you wish you didn't come? This is Patrick, Patrick, you know, coming in this area. This is uh, river. Very, very, very difficult. Where where do you want to go? America. You want to go to America? Yes. This gentleman has taken, like so many others, uh, just a harrowing journey. He started in South Sudan, transited through Uganda, Rwanda, then got to Brazil, then flew to Peru, made his way up to Ecuador, where he says he got mugged and robbed, found his way to Colombia, and now here he is in the Darien Gap two months later. So they're willing to take this long, long, circuitous route. And it gives you a sense into the drive and the determination and the desperation uh, that people face in trying to get to a better place. Let's go, let's go. Woo! Suddenly, they're less weighed down by their bags and their fears. The migrants are energized, empowered by their numbers. They're anxious to move through one final hurdle. This is probably the best shampoo I've ever experienced. In the morning, we wait with Shahab for another guide. We've nearly made it to the first outpost of civilization. I don't keep waiting for this, but right now I have more, more, more stress. Two hours, I'm going to the police. And I don't know what's happened. What are you going to tell the police? I need refuge. I need refuge because in Iran I don't have life, I don't have security. I need new life, mm -hmm. new life. So we finally reached a point where the rivers are navigable, so the last leg of the journey out of the Darien involves uh, getting on a boat, heading to the first tiny village where immigration awaits. So what's your plan if Panama accepts you? I said money for other country, other country. So you go and do it. No, how much money do you have now? Nothing. You have nothing? Nothing. Do you think that God can help you get through this? Yeah, call me. I expect to hear from you in your new restaurant, yes. and and I'll come eat at your restaurant. Yes. Take care. See you later. All right. Yeah. See you in a few months. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello